Hey everybody, on this episode of After Buzz TV Spotlight On, we're getting up close and personal with actor Leland Bowden. Let's do it. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Oh, look at that. An old classic bringing us into this episode of After Buzz TV Spotlight On. This is the show where we talk to the people both in front and behind the camera that bring you all that great entertainment you get to see while you're sitting at home watching TV or maybe on your mobile streaming device. I'm your host, Frank Moran. My guest today is an actor, improviser, and activist. A California native, she got her start and decided to come to L.A. to pursue a dream in acting, and you've seen her on shows like Parks and Recreation, Conan, and Suburgatory, but now... You can catch her on the Disney Channel show Andy Mack, which just had its season three premiere on October 8th. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break it all down with Leelan Bowden. Hey, Frank. <laughs> hey, Leelan. All right. How are you? I'm great. There you go. Now, oh, this, I'm, please. I'm just such a, I'm in a great mood. You're playing one of my favorite songs. Like that intro was so flattering and. I'm like, wow, oh, you, wait, wait, maybe I'm cool. You are very cool. <laughs> now, uh, one thing you asked me right before we started yeah. is that uh, I said, oh, I like interviewing. And you said, I like being interviewed. I do. What is, what is something that you enjoy about being interviewed? You know, I think it's just because, like, maybe I'm j I, I just, like, have a big ego and I really <laughs> like hearing. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this person's asking questions about me and they just want me to talk about myself and not stop. And that's uh, that's gratifying because I feel like a normal conversation you have to be like, okay, and the polite thing is then say, what about you? <laughs> and I just like talking about myself apparently. <laughs> well, that's all right because this is what we're here about. We're going we're gonna to yes. talk about you the whole time. Wow. Yes. So let's start off <laughs> a California native. Yes. Which I feel like anybody that's in the entertainment industry, I find it's hard to find a lot of California natives. A lot of people like they've come from all across the country or even the world. Oh, yeah. To pursue a career. Out here. Yeah. I'm not an L.A. native. And I feel like that's the unicorn. If you yes. find someone who's in the industry, who's from Los Angeles, I feel like you're like, what is your story? <laughs> um, but I'm from the Bay Area, uh, the East Bay, not San Francisco. Uh, which I, 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 that's not better or worse. It's just like I, I want to be clear about it. Yeah, but you, it can seem like you're like nah, the East Bay. All right. That, it's well, the part in the the East Bay I grew up in is, is not. Uh, is, is not like memorable. It's not on a big map. Like I feel like a lot of people know about Oakland. A lot of people know about Berkeley. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a place that's adjacent to those cities. Um, but I don't think a lot of people have really heard about San Leandro or Castro Valley. So I just I bump over to Oakland or Berkeley when I'm talking about where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> so was acting always in the cards for you? Yeah, I, which is it's weird. You know, I I think I take for granted how much uh, how, how beneficial it is to know what you want to do your whole life. And I didn't realize that it wasn't the same way for other people. But I remember being a kid and just being like, yeah, I think the acting thing is the only thing. Um, and I and I wasn't like necessarily like a class clown or um, I don't think you could have predicted that I would have been this person now from how I was as a child, <laughs> but it was always in the back of my mind, you know, even if I was like shy and even if I didn't express my feelings a lot, I'd still be like, I would like to act, please, you know, and then <laughs> fade in the shadows from once I came. Uh, <laughs> what was one of the uh, a first show or movie that kind of stuck into your head and said like, wow, that is something I want to do? This is a weird answer because it's an animated film. Um, but one of my favorite Disney films is Aladdin. All right. And the reason why I say that is because after I watched Aladdin, I started inventing my own part that I'd play in the sequel that hadn't come out yet, Return of Jafar, which didn't have me in it, weirdly well, enough. It's Disney's loss. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we're here together and now. That's right. They made it for it now. <laughs> yes. Um, but I imagined an entire sequel of Aladdin where I played Aladdin Jasmine's daughter. And I had like a whole storyline for myself where I... Um, I wanted to, I was a princess, right? But I wanted to live in my dad's like street rat ways. And so I'd, I'd uh, moonlight as, as a street urchin, um, but go back to my palace and, and have these adventures. I'm trying to remember what the actual movie was, but I would be in my backyard acting out scenes from this movie that didn't exist. <laughs> so now that you're on Andy Mac, have you reached out to the Disney executives and said, you know, I have this idea. It's just here. Okay, so... Aladdin, he's old now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's got, <laughs> he's got an adult daughter. Yes. <laughs> it could be animated. I'll do the voice. Yep. Live action preferred. <laughs> um, no, I haven't. 
All right. Well, I mean, that, yeah, <laughs> this I mean, is the start of it. That's true. That <laughs> I got true. a pitch, guys. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> You'll love it. So growing up, as you kind of get this interest in acting, uh, do your parents, or are they artistically inclined? Were they like, yeah, Leland, go for it? Um, they did say, yeah, Leland, go for it. And they are not artistically inclined. Uh, my mom is a programmer and my dad is an electrical engineer. Uh, I think my dad is still maybe super bummed that I didn't go into the sciences or, or uh, technology or anything like that. Because I'm not bad at... Oh, I, I'm out of practice. Um, but I, I used to uh, I used to know HTML and I could make websites and stuff. And I learned a little bit of basic coding and it, and it comes naturally to me. So there, there's a whole parallel life where I could have been that I feel like, but I didn't want it. And I wasn't sure. willing to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I feel like some children feel like they need to do what their parents want them to do. And sometimes they feel like it's a struggle to like, no, I really want to do what I want to do. Yeah, I I felt really, I think I've been really lucky. My parents, uh, even though they aren't actors themselves and they're, they don't really play instruments, or they're not even connected to pop culture, really. You know, they didn't really watch TV. Uh, <laughs> my dad exposed me some of his favorite action movies. Um, but other than that, I, I there's a lot of movies I missed out on because my parents didn't really have an interest in staying up to date with uh, what's coming out in theaters and uh, what's on TV right now. Uh, so I was lucky that they, uh, supported me anyway. You know, I, I made it clear to them. I said, I want to act. And they said, oh, okay, well, I guess we'll find you some lessons or something. And, uh, in the Bay area, I remember they like took me to a cattle call and, uh, which was for kids and you did a little audition and then you got part, you won a program, which you paid a lot of money <laughs> to take classes. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Uh, you know, it, it kind of had that like, you know, money making I don't want to say scam feel, but, you know, like it, it was one of those things. And, and we did it and I took the classes. And at the end, you auditioned for a group of agents and I got an agent for commercials and I uh, did a couple of local commercials. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Do, uh, do you still have any copies of those? Were you able to? Oh, my gosh. They're like on VHS somewhere. Yeah. And, and there's only like two. Like there's not. A, but what I did find the other day, uh, one of my friends, uh, I, I don't know what the process is called, but they took all the footage on um, VHS tape and made it digitized it. They oh, digitized right. it. And one of the tapes is just me as like an eight year old practicing auditions. And I did, <laughs> I did my own slate and I called my own cues. So I would be in front of camera going, Alice Leland Bowden, age eight, action. <laughs> my mom likes kicks because it's good for us. But I like kicks because it tastes good. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just like hours of this. Oh, all right. You can see the potential right in there in those in those early takes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I I, I I hope someone could. I don't know. I couldn't looking back at it. I was like, wow. But what I could see is somebody who wanted it badly. Yeah. <laughs> well, seeing as how much you enjoyed slating and doing kind of auditions. Yeah. Do you now, as an adult, enjoy the audition process? Yeah. I know that sounds like such like a, a unbelievable answer <laughs> because so many actors hate it. Um, but I do like it. And I I have always liked it, even though that there's some that are really stressful. And there there's you're going to have your days, right? You're going to have your days where there's something that you have an audition for that you're not really passionate about. Maybe it's getting in the way of something that you're more passionate about it, like a show at UCB. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, but uh, should I explain what UCB is? Oh, well, Brigade? Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll definitely get, get to it okay, okay. for sure. Um, but uh, I, I've always liked auditions because I feel like it's a, um, a free chance to perform. And what we've already established is I love being seen. <laughs> <laughs> so even if it's if it's not like you have a job and, and it can be nerve wracking and stuff. Uh, I, I like the idea of um, being sold some new copy, being like, I've never thought of myself as as a, a forest creature that is leader of the elflings, you know, before, but now I can think of myself like that. And what an interesting challenge that I would have never given myself. So there's a lot I actually like about the audition process. So as you finish high school and you're getting ready to go to college, yeah. what made you decide to come down to uh, UC Irvine? Oh, I mean, it was kind of almost like process of elimination. I was a little bit tardy on getting those applications out. <laughs> and the UC system, you can submit one application to all of them for just like one. Like, oh, nice. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, this is the best bang for my buck. 
Um, and then and then just kind of these factors kind of minimized down. Uh, I didn't get into Berkeley. I didn't get into UCLA. Um, and I did get into Irvine. And so I thought, oh, what's the next best thing besides L.A.? Irvine, yeah. <laughs> which unfortunately I think a lot of people think. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you come down to Irvine. I mean, I, I've driven, I hung out a little bit in Irvine. Yeah. I mean, sort of like the Irvine spectrum area. That's yeah. Why mm -hmm. I think of when everybody thinks of Irvine I, around locally. I think locally. that's the best part. Really? Yeah. All right. I guess, all right. The, 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 yeah, I haven't gone over and explored the other the other sites <laughs> that Irvine has to hold. I think you stay right there. That's, stay right there. That's, 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 that's the, the place. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, you also got involved in uh, act, uh, social acti activism while you were there as well, too. Yeah. Um, I think I guess it started in high school a little bit. And, and yeah, that's not really something I, I got from my parents either. I mean, my parents are great people, um, but uh, not very politically involved, I would say. And uh, in high school, I joined like the Amnesty International Club and the GSA, the Gay Straight Alliance, and um, uh, and I was part of the debate team, which isn't like a political thing, an activist thing per mm -hmm. se, but uh, but it was helping me with those skills, and I I really liked doing things um, just like on the most local level at my high school, like printing out flyers for International Women's Day and and getting petitions going around. Um, I remember after high school, I like tried to apply for an internship um, with like a nonprofit LGBT organization, and I um, I don't identify as uh, a gay or bi. I, I identify as straight, um, and and they were so impressed with my passion, but they were like, it would just be really nice if we could <laughs> hire like a gay teen, <laughs> you know? Th thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and then so I continued that in college, and and I joined a, a college chapter called uh, Calperg. Um, which was founded by Nader as kind of like a way to be like, hey, college students, uh, they've got time, they care about issues, and you know they're paying money for tuition. What if like we took like a tiny percentage of that, and college students could pay for a lobbyist that could advocate for their issues um, in Washington or on the, on the state level? And uh, and then they also had local chapters that were students um, that petitioned people for. Um, better homelessness policies and better environmental rights. And uh, while I was at Irvine, I started, uh, it eventually got known as the Cheaper Textbooks Campaign, uh, something specific for students. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Because those textbooks, man, they can yeah. get crazy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So uh, interesting that uh, when you're saying that your parents really weren't uh, very politically active. Yeah. So for you, what was it about the world that you said, I want to contribute in some way to try to make a change? Um, I'm... <sighs> Gosh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess just because the world is inherently unfair, mm -hmm. and it's nice to feel like you're making it more fair. I guess. I mean, the world's not fun. It's it's uh, it's rough out there, and I feel like uh, if if you're not doing anything at all, you know, I, and and then you can get into the issue of how much or how little you're doing. But I think if you're not doing anything at all to contribute to being a better person and, and to give back to your world, then that's not really a life worth living, you know? And, and so it, it always just, it wasn't even like a, a, a light bulb or anything. I didn't have like a, a Schindler's List moment where I was like, wait a minute, I could be good, you know? And I, I don't want to compare myself to Schindler's List. He's like, <laughs> he's a saint and, and I'm just, you know, I'm having fun, I'm making funnies. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I, th I think it just it, it was just something that made sense. It was logical. And I've never really understood people who don't have that same type of inherent logic. Like you want to spend your life and you want to spend your time doing good things. And if you're not, you should th it's natural to feel guilty. And so for people who didn't feel guilty because they weren't spending enough time doing good things, I was like, you're interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, after, uh, as I understand, after school, after college, they offered you a, a job there, and you decided, I'd rather maybe uh, pursue acting. Is Calper, it, yeah. Yes. So um, is it tough to balance something where you want to do, make the world a better place, but then you also have this part of you that also wants to pursue something that you yeah. want as a career? Oh, yeah. Um, so I got offered a... I, I, I mean, it wasn't in like a step into my office, a very formal way, but um, the campus org organizer made it known that if I wanted a job as a campus organizer, that could be something that I, I could get. Um, and I'd go to a different college and I'd be doing similar stuff um, to what I was doing as a student volunteer and, and getting students involved and um, teaching classes about issues and stuff like that. Um, and uh, the the... The hard part, the hard truth is that I, even when I was considering, I was like, I know I want to act, 
I like I know it, you know, and and so I did really g give myself like a good try to consider it and say, you know, well, I can just have so much more impact if I do this. Um, but the drive to be in L.A. and to want to pursue a career in entertainment was stronger. And I just had to be honest with myself about that. And, and I thought I'm not going to be as effective and I'm not going to love my life as much. And, and I'll I'll deal with, uh, you know, how I feel about that. I'd rather deal with how I feel about that and pursue acting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like that's the hardest thing for somebody is to just know themselves. Yeah. And and make choices based on what they think other people want of them. Yeah. And then find themselves years later regretting choices that they made that didn't satisfy themselves personally. Totally. I mean, when I went to, when I um, got into UC Irvine, I went in as an undecided major because I thought it's it's just useless to pursue theater. Um, and then it lasted a day, literally a day. I went to my friend's orientation who um, was a drama major and I was like, oh, clearly this, you know, like, <laughs> why, why am I staving this off of just like, oh, maybe I have options. Maybe I got, clearly I want to, you know, even um, even though realistically you can't really um, audition a theater major and be like, well, I have a major. So um, jobs, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I just that's just how I wanted to spend my time. That's how I wanted to spend my higher education is learning more about theater acting and, and film acting. And, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. When uh, after you finished graduating and you said, all right, I want to go to L.A. to really uh, focus on acting. Were your parents thinking, oh, she's going to go to UC Irvine and then she'll probably just come back up here and be up north with us? I wonder. Uh, I know some of my relatives did. They're like, oh, you're going to stay in LA? Okay. You know, like it's <laughs> confusing. Um, my parents, I don't know. My dad said before that he always thought I was going to be a, a visual artist. And he was kind of hoping that I would because when I was a kid, I was really crafty. I was very much like Andy Mack herself in the show where she's making things uh, out of recycled materials and stuff. And I had a bunch of, you know, things that I collected and it was hard for me to get rid of stuff because it could be made into something, you know, and I loved doing that. <clears throat> um, and I think my dad was kind of hoping that um, I'd pursue something like that. Excuse me. Oh, please. Delicious. OK. Best water in town. Right <clears throat> It's the best um, because the, he was hoping that I could get into like design, you know, graphic design. And I think that that's a little bit more stable than just acting, which is completely unstable. True. I, I guess any parent would want their child to at least, even if you're not pursuing something that they would love you, like your dad's like, oh, do programming or something. At least yeah. your job that is that is consistent and steady. Yeah, it all came back down to they just wanted me to feel happy and, and happy with my life. And, you know, part of a big part of that for everybody is being financially secure mm -hmm. or almost everybody. Yeah. So when you come up to Los Angeles, when does uh, improvising? I mean, you did uh, do some in college, but when does the idea like, hey, yeah, I want to get more involved in whether it be UCB, Groundlings, uh, IOS yeah. or anything? Well, my love of improv started in high school, actually. I joined the comedy sports uh, troupe, and I, I was like, this is it. This is everything. I love it. I, I know myself now, you know? <laughs> I am an improviser. Um, and, uh, and so when I went to college, that's the first thing I asked um, when I was doing my tours of campuses. I, every tour I did on a campus, I said, does this college have an improv group? Uh, what is it like? And so that was part of the whole deal. And so as, as soon as I got to L.A., I was like, got to stick with it. Um, but what was cool about Upright Citizens Brigade and all and most of the improv theaters out here is that they do long form instead of short form. Mm -hmm. And I'd been doing short form this whole time. And I um, I love the idea of long form. You know, it's uh, it felt really like the next level, the next the next frontier. And so I. I had a good time uh, taking classes, even though I wasn't very good to start with, I don't think. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Uh, was UCB your first choice, or did you try some of the other theaters, too, before you really locked in no, on UCB? No, um, and part of that is just, like, I'm kind of like a... I, a fish in, in the current of the of the water, and where I landed in LA was was close to a UCB theater, and um, one of my friends at the t a couple of my friends from college at the time had already taken classes, and so it's just like that's where the the stream was flowing. Um, it, it just made the most sense, and I'm so glad I started there too because I feel like I'm so close to um, even the people I started out with, which is ten years ago. 
Well, ah. <laughs> but, hey, but then they say that you need that amount of time as with a Malcolm Gladwell says it's, oh. it's, it takes 10 years to before you can read. I love a good Malcolm Gladwell book. There you go. I've read a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like the great thing about coming out here is that uh, part of the excitement and sometimes the frustration for people is finding people that you have a comedic sensibility with, that you can partner up with. Yeah. And you found that with Walter Smith. I did, yes. yes. My BFF my friend for life. Um, yeah, so Wilder is a friend of mine from college, actually. Oh, wow. And so we did the improv group at UC Irvine together, which was called Live Nude People with Clothes On. Um, because, you know, we're funny. <laughs> it has an asterisk in it, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it has an asterisk. Yes. yes. Dang, you are, like, top top research. That's right. Yeah, you wow. <laughs> you know about the asterisks. I mean, not that it's a secret, but... Uh, anyway, uh, water, great. Um, yeah, so uh, we were friends in college. We were roommates. We we like we're like, oh, I get you. Um, we were more best friends in a group of six people, the people we lived with. And then um, she graduated, and I graduated a year later. And she was in New York. I was in L.A. And then when she got back to L.A., we kind of approached each other again. We're like, hey, you're in town. You want to hang out? I, I guess, you know, we're kind of shy about it, actually. <laughs> and she was working on a one person show and I was working on a one person show. So we were giving each other notes. And then we're like, what if we did something together? Is that like crazy? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so then we started writing sketch comedy pieces together and performing them live. And then honestly, it was our best friendship that came last. You know, we, we had such a fun time doing these sketches, but we hadn't really hung out outside of working on comedy. And I remember there was like one night where um, we were driving, we had carpooled to a show and we were um, carpooling home and Wilder like wanted to hang out, but didn't know how to ask me. And she's like, hey, I, I'm not just trying to drop you off at your apartment if, if you want to get a milkshake. You know, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> and we're really like, I, do you are you do you want to get a milkshake because I would love to hang out with you? <laughs> Is that always that awkward moment when you're like I really want to get this know, know this person better? Yes, how like, do I say that without seeming weird? Yes, like and so uh, yeah, then we just became best friends and we're best friends uh, up till now. We just shot sketches today. Oh, awesome! Yes, we woke up early and and um, got two sketches done before I came here. <laughs> well, that is one thing that I do love about the UCB community is that it, if you want, whether it is improv or sketch, there is a vast community and resources to tap into. So if you want to put on a, a tape of sketch, there are many people you can reach out to. So many incredibly talented people. Oh, yeah. That's been one of my favorite parts of being a part of the UCB community is because I've exactly what you said. There are, there are resources and they're, um, they're in the form of people who are just as passionate as you who want to um, expand their boundaries and want to try something. You know, may, like that's how I started writing sketch and um, that's how I started making shorts and, and sketch comedy videos is because... And not because I like thought that was part of the plan, but it's like, oh, I've never done that before, but you haven't either, and I guess we could try. Um, and I feel like that's such a big part of the attitude that exists at UCB. I feel like the challenge for anybody is trying to find who your voice is, or what your voice is. Because you're certainly uh, a sum of all your influences, but then taking all those and then finding out what's my What's my unique take? Oh uh, yeah, this? I think I'm still finding it out, you know, and I and I do feel like I know myself pretty well. Um, but I think for I don't know what it's like for other people, but I feel like a big part of my journey has been like to understand what my truth is and what I can contribute, you know, and um, like uh, apparently a, a big part of who I am is like being better at clean comedy than I am at dirty comedy, um, which is great because I'm on a Disney show. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Um, <laughs> but like some people, I think they, they wear it really well. Like I think some people, they're just so good at, at being insult comics or there's there's people who are good at being subversive and um, and edgy. And there are some good, at pe there are people who are, um, I think, better at, at just like being joyful and simple. And I think that's a big part of my comedy. Well, I feel like because you may watch performers that you were like, wow, that is funny. That is so cool. That kind of speaks to me in some fashion. And then you kind of try to emulate that person when yes. it's not really who the kind of comedy in deep down, as you're saying, knowing your truth, that's really you. And so you kind of spend that time going like, oh, this is just not. I, oh, I totally. This. I mean, it, it's it's so clear that we know each other from improv, yeah. you know? You don't get these questions in interviews with people who don't do improv, you know? And, like, I hope I'm not blowing up your spot. Like, <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> this interview is over. <laughs> you know, but, 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 it's, but it's like that's exactly, I feel like, a big trap of um, being an enter entertainer in, in general, you know, you, uh, whether it's improv or um, 
or a film or anything like that is that you see somebody that you respect and they're being really successful and so you think okay the way to be successful is to just be more like them and um, it's a much longer and harder journey to be like no it's to be the best this you know mm -hmm. to be the best you well with UCB certainly I mean it's very it, there's a lot of resources and a lot of people want to help each other but also if you look at it in terms of like a, one end goal is reaching a Herald team and there's certainly uh, limited spots so there it becomes a nature of kind of competition yeah to get to that and it becomes a, a goal that lots of people chase for many many years trying to get on that oh my gosh don't we know it yes <laughs> I've spent many times chasing that but I was fortunate as I was telling you, the last time that we really saw each other is when I saw you kill it on your callback to make it on your UCB team oh my gosh yes That's so this is so like it's just so crazy that like we're full circle now and you're interviewing <laughs> me and we're on after bus like it's it's cool um uh, but oh sorry was oh, no. there a question? so for you yeah no, I just wanted to compliment you for, oh, first for that but then also thank you how uh as somebody who made it on a team which is kind of a, a goal for many people did you find the experience of being on Herald Knight uh what you'd hoped it would be I did I, I mean, I, I also want to be like, yeah, it's not the end all be all, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and, and the, you know, there's a part of you to be like, don't worry, it's not as great as it seems, you know, like, <laughs> just, to, just to provide comfort for people who don't get um, those very coveted spots who are very deserving, you know, like the, the sad truth of that whole system of auditioning for um, a Herald team at UCB is that there are tons more people who are deserving that are going to, there's just not the room, you know. Um, and but I mean I uh, I still have my text chain going, you know, which is current like today current with my whole Herald team, and um, I wasn't even on for all three years of my Herald team. I, I was off for the last year. Um, the timing was uh, pretty great because I went to Utah anyway to shoot Andy Mac, mm -hmm. um, and I was replaced uh, with uh, with um, Ego Wadim who is now on Saturday Night Live. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, we're we're everywhere now. The team hasn't been in rotation for a year, um, but we're still so close. Um, and so I I have UCB to thank, and I have like that whole community to to thank for that whole experience that got me there, and to find these friends that are also lifelong. That's fantastic. That is one of the great things that you can take away from UCB. Uh, and it, whether it's UCB or any th theater, if you're on a, on a Herald team or an improv team, those kind of, uh, when it gels, boy, there's nothing better. Oh my gosh, yeah. It doesn't always happen, too. I think my experience was unique, you know. Um, not not super rare, but unique. Um, like, not every Herald team gels, not um, not every cast gels. And, and I feel really lucky that um, my main Herald team was, like, a family. And then the first TV show that I get to be a series regular of, it, like, that's a family. And community is so important to me that <laughs> I, I think I would just crumble if I, if I was part of these ongoing things that required a lot of time and a lot of passion in your art that, uh, that didn't gel as a, as a family. Well, for you, as you're doing sketch, you're doing improv, you're also auditioning. Yeah. And as I mentioned at the beginning, you're, people are seeing you popping up on Parks and Recreation, Suburgatory, Conan, doing a lot of for the, for his late night show. Uh, what are reactions to family back at home when they start, when you're able to call them and say, hey, if you turn on the TV, guess who you're going to see? Um, <laughs> um, my family uh, is like totally supportive. Um, I feel like my extended family might be a little bit more like connected or a little bit more impressed than like my mom and dad just because they, they don't watch TV. Um, but it's interesting to see which pro projects will like hit them. Like for years, my dad had, um, I think his screensaver on his work computer was a still of me in the sci-fi film that I did called Zombie Apocalypse. And he was just so proud, you know, <laughs> of this TV sci-fi film that I did where I play somebody in the apocalypse who shoots bows and arrows. And uh, he was just like, yes, that's my daughter. This is this is her greatest achievement. <laughs> yeah. um, and then for my mom, it's Andy Mack, um, not just because it's a um, it, it's the biggest job I've had, but. Uh, what's really cool is that my mom is uh, second generation, or sorry, first generation. She's from Taiwan. Um, she learned English probably a little bit later, uh, and so she's fluent. But a lot of American television is moves very quickly. It's got a lot of nuance. It's hard to understand. Um, but Andy Mack is a show that is, since it's made um, for children, um, she really appreciates like the time that they take to explain concepts. And she's like, this is great. I can understand this. And my mom's like super smart. It's just that it's like, um, just because it's not her first language, um, I think that it means a lot to her to have a show that her daughter's on that she can really follow along with storylines and get invested. 
So when the Andy Mack audition comes along and you're reading, aside for, for Bex, you're playing, uh, what did you feel when you start reading about what the character is going to be as you're going into audition? Do you feel like, wow, yes, I can totally relate to this character to somebody I can... I can really nail? Totally. And I mean, I haven't had a kid out of wedlock when I was a teenager. Like there's, oh, a, oh, there's, right. you know, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but, uh, but the way she was written felt so relatable to me. Like I, I read her lines and, and I was like, oh, I get this woman. I, I like get who she is. I get why she does the things she does. I uh, like, I like the weird, like, you know, side comments that she makes and the way she deals with conflict and um, the, what she wants wants out of her sister or daughter and what she wants out of her mom like all of that made so much sense to me that I really did feel like oh my gosh they better <laughs> they better give me this even though like you are owed nothing <laughs> so for you, they, they come back and say uh, Leland we want to offer you the role uh, but we also shoot in Park City so that was a, a newer development um, okay. th- yeah, what you got to do is you got to hook them yeah. And then you move them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go. I guess I'm going to Utah. Yeah, All right. yeah like, uh, and uh, and we shoot in Salt Lake, like South nice. Salt Lake. Um, I wonder if we've ever shot in Park City. No, we haven't shot in Park City okay. yet. I don't think so. Um, but we shoot in different places around Utah, too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was, I, I remember just being like, okay, so um, they're thinking about moving the production to Utah. Cool. And I was like, cool, yeah, because just let me shoot a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> Move me. I don't care. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I got a suitcase. I'll leave. Um, uh, but I, it's been a, like, a surprisingly cool experience. Um, I, I'm a city girl. I'm a California girl. I love California. Um, I wasn't, like, d- dreading going to Utah or anything like that. But I, was, I didn't know what to expect because I've only known, like, two towns, really, or I guess three that I've lived in that have all been on, like, the coast of California. And so I, I was prepared for new adventures and to adjust um, and, and, and to just take in whatever the scenery was. And I think Salt Lake is super cool. It's awesome. I think it's fun. It, and the best part is that it's got like a lot of the charm of Silver Lake does. Um, so Silver Lake has, but um, more parking. <laughs> oh, which is always that it, right there. That always makes a place I want to go to. If you can park, I love you. I love awesome. you. Parking. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> I mean, that might have been the best part of moving. It's just like I can drive my car, and then when I get to my location, I'm there. Yes. <laughs> I park out front, and I walk in. It's like fantastic. a queen. <laughs> <laughs> it felt so good. <laughs> well, if for somebody who said that they that you really enjoy community. Yes. Uh, you, the of course, show and yes. the uh, concept. Yeah, absolutely. For uh, TV shows, films, it's a smaller, uh, smaller amount of time that you are together. But now going into season three for this, it's three seasons of you folks together. How how much have you enjoyed just kind of really building that sense of community with the, the people both in front and behind the scenes on Andy Mac? Oh yeah, that's another great thing about Utah too is that the um there are like our crew has been pretty much the same for all three seasons, um and there's and it's not I mean like each each TV show is like that no matter where you shoot but I think there's something special about shooting in Utah because I think it really funneled us together it definitely funneled the cast together because the cast is all from out of town. Um, and so, like, we were separated from our, our – the kids were separated from, like, half of their family unit. You know, one parent stays here and the other one's with their siblings. Um, and I'm separated from my improv community and uh, my friends. And uh, so it really, like, gelled us in, like, an extra way. I'd like to think that we we gel anyway, you know. Mm-hmm. But it was like, oh, we're the only people here. We're the family now. And – the crew has known so much of the crew has known each other forever you know they've been in the business forever and they've um watched people get married and seen their kids grow up and and so we've i kind of felt like i was come i had this family of cast members and i was coming into another family which is the family that shoots things in utah and so that's was a cool feeling yeah now uh, what in terms of the shooting schedule how often are you in park city or in utah excuse me and then how often do you get a chance to come back here to la um I'd say it kind of averages about to like maybe once a month or once every two months. Um, so I'm I'm just enough to uh, have everybody miss me and to collect the the 
ac accolades and the yeah, co right. collect all that you know sympathy and stuff like that or, or whatever that feeling is it's like oh we miss you so much you know uh, um, yes thank you <laughs> and as much as I possibly can I think <laughs> um, with with still being able to hang out with my friends um, I don't know if I'm out wearing that kind of tourist welcome <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been good so far <laughs> that's great and especially with uh, with Wilder working on your sketches. Easy to, uh, I mean, certainly the digital age makes it a lot easier to be. Here's a cool factoid. Ooh, all right. She's in Utah. She's the dialogue coach of Andy Mac. Oh, hey. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's great. It's so cool. Yes. It's definitely made things easier for me, you know, just being out with my best friend. I would say that, weirdly enough, we still use our L.A. time to work on our own stuff. Because mm -hmm. I feel like in Utah, like, we're working. It's We have a different mission, you know. Um, like, sh my character will just work on how many days, basically, the character plays for the episode. But Wilder works every day. And it's it's cold and, you know, wake up early. And, and uh, the kids want to go out to eat afterwards. And so. So it's like there's not like a ton of free time that I'm spending with my best friend, you know, like writing sketches. We still get it done, but I feel like we get more done when we're back on hiatuses in Los Angeles. True. I, I, when you don't have the uh, like distractions of your day job. You yeah. Know, just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, man. oh, gosh. I have to be on this TV show or whatever. <laughs> Instead now, of doing my free sketch comedy. <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, speaking of comedy, there is a, a great improv scene there in, in Utah in the Salt Lake area. Have you done any improv while you've been out there? Um, I'm trying to get, like, like Wilder and I have kind of, like, sniffed our noses around of, like, what's going on. I think we can do a, definitely a better job of it. Um, we've been able to perform with a group in Ogden. Um, which is called Sasquatch Cowboy. We um, we haven't done it this season, but a couple of times in previous seasons, and that's been so fun. They're awesome. They're funny. They're cool. Um, and then uh, we we've attended like a an improv workshop. You know, we're just trying to get the improv wherever we can find it. You know, like <laughs> connections through friends and stuff like that. And also when we have time for it. Um, our shooting schedule is Tuesday through Saturday, so we don't have like the regular weekend. Okay. And so sometimes, like on the, on, like on the, you know, actual weekend, we're just like today is recovery day, and then Monday <laughs> yeah. is a work day for everybody else, and so and then we're Tuesday we're back to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, uh, Wilder and I have performed at a local high school twice. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what was that like? Uh, it was super fun. I feel like the first time we were just like, all right, we did it. You know, we we uh, impressed everybody and you're welcome. Second time was like mixed response. <laughs> we thought we were just we like brought like our sketches that, you know, have done so well in L.A. that are just like surefire hits. Every single sketch we put in the show, we had done like already like at least five times in front of different live audiences. So we're like, OK, no way to fail. And like the response was like up and down. <laughs> so some sketches are very cool. Some they're like, oink. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of comedy, I just want to ask you in terms of, because you've done one person show, you've done your sketch comedy with Wilder, and you've done improv. Which, in terms of those, what are those, which do each kind of, how do they each fulfill you? What kind of itch do they, each individual kind scratch. of scratch? What, what itches do they scratch? Um, okay, so the first one was. One person show? One person show. Um, oh my gosh, there's nothing like a one person show to get you to trust yourself, obviously. You know, like there's there's nobody that you can't take a break, obviously. If you're on an improv team, you can be like, oh, no ideas. Somebody else go out. <laughs> um, but and it, the one person show that I did was a really big learning experience about myself because usually it's about you. I haven't seen a ton that like where, where people do characters that have nothing to do with them, you know. Um, and so uh, I, it was almost like therapy in like a really deep, intense way that people can watch. Um, sketch comedy, it, I mean, I guess they're all therapy for me, <laughs> you yeah. know. I've got a lot to work out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, sketch comedy, I feel like is um, great because it's got like a, a quick return. You know, you, it, it only takes a little bit of time to write a sketch um, and then put it up on a show or um, even to film it. And, and it takes limited funds. It's so different from trying to like crowdfund or, for a, a, um, a short or mm -hmm. a feature. Uh, it, it's like something that you can do literally in a day like Wilder and I did today. And, you know, it's not going to be like it's not going to win any awards for, you know, like best lighting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How's best lighting? Definitely, there's yeah. nothing on like our YouTube channel that would ever win best lighting. <laughs> there should be yeah, that, that category, just best lighting. If there's right anything there. I'm confident about, <laughs> um, 
but uh, but like you can put your stuff out there and get instant feedback, you know, and, and I feel like that's helped me grow. Um, and then improv is just great because you don't have to bring any props. <laughs> <laughs> improv is so, it's, it's like a gym almost at this point now. Like, um, you know, I'll have good shows and bad shows. You know what's up. Um, and so I feel like there's a time when you're a student where every show feels like, oh, if this doesn't go well, I'm quitting <laughs> L.A. Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I'm not there anymore, thank goodness. It doesn't mean I can't return, but I. Yeah. But for the most part, not there. Um, it feels just like a release. You know, there's been times where I've had a small hiatus from Andy Mack and in town for a couple days. And I'll just look at the schedule at UCB and see who's running what show and just like see if I can get in there. You know, just be like, hey, can I can I just like pop on in and and just perform for 15 15 minutes and and that feels just like getting a workout in at the treadmill which I should do more often and I totally don't <laughs> <laughs> well I feel like that's the nice thing about getting whether it's doing sketch or especially a one-person show is that it just makes you have to feel less precious about it is just like that's a good benefit too I'm just gonna get it out there and good yeah. or bad I'm gonna learn from it and grow and keep improving yes it helps you with your humility it helps you with your thick skin because um especially all those three forms of live theater that are not plays um you're just you're destined to have you know stinkers D there's no getting around it you're there's you can be so good and because of the nature of the art you know in improv you literally don't know what's going to happen and in uh sketch you know different audiences will receive you on different nights and different material um i don't do a lot of stand-up but i imagine that's the same for um regularly performing stand-ups too um so it's just like you just have to be okay with people hating you <laughs> And hating your art and the things that you tried so hard uh, to make good. And that makes you strong. And I feel like it gives you a better um, a better shield for when you then you go into auditions. Mm -hmm. You know, like every audition doesn't feel like it's going to break your back. It, you because you know what it's like to like disappoint a room of <laughs> 60 people. Yeah, or sometimes <laughs> even six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or a room of six people, which is way sadder Oof. if you're doing like improv or sketch. <laughs> yeah, those are those, those rough shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, Leland, young Leland watching Aladdin, a uh, Disney film yeah. know, made by Disney, but. What would uh, young Leland think if, like, all right, you could come to her and say, you know what, as an adult, guess what? You are going to be on a Disney Channel show. I don't know, man. It's just, I, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. I remember my biggest goal, not even as young, young Lelon, but as, like, 20-year-old 20, 20 Lelon. My biggest goal was to... Or, you know what, scale me back, because, like, I do have this very specific memory. Um, I was in high school, and I just got back from improv camp, and I saw one of my camp counselors, improv camp, by the way. I'm um, super nerdy. <laughs> um, I saw one of my camp counselors, like, the week I got back on a commercial, on, like, a TV commercial that was, like, anti-smoking. Um, oh, it was it was Steve Agee. People know Steve Agee. Yeah. Um, so he was one of my camp counselors when I went to improv camp <laughs> at comedy sports camp. And then I saw him in like a commercial and I was like, that is my ultimate goal to be on a commercial. <laughs> and that's where the bar stopped. Yes. Like I didn't have any more imagination after that. I, I couldn't imagine these things of like being on Conan or Parks and Rec or like being a star of a Disney Channel show. And so these things happening, you know, they still feel surreal. They still feel like I'm like, I, I, I don't know how to connect this. It doesn't feel like, yep, did it. You know, it just feels like I don't know what happened, but like, don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, unfortunately, our time is wrapping up. But uh, check out uh, Andy Mack, season three, currently airing on the Disney Channel, Monday nights. Uh, the season premiere was just this past Monday, October 8th. Yes. So look at that. Yes. So, uh, but if they, uh, Leland, if they want to keep up to date with all the stuff that you're doing, whether it be sketch, whether it be Andy Mack, or anything else that you're working on, where's the best place to find you? Uh, I hang out on Instagram and mm. Twitter. Uh, I'm at your friend Leland, because I'm your friend. Oh, look at that. All right, very nice. Excellent. So make sure you check out Andy Mack. I, if you didn't get a chance to catch this past Monday, it is on demand for, uh, at, at Disney as well. So uh, you can check it and out. And Disney Now. Disney the Now. App? Yep. yep. Uh, check it out iTunes as well. Many places to check it out. I've been your host, Frank Moran. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. We'll be back with another episode of AfterBuzz TV Spotlight on right here on AfterBuzz TV.
Bye, everybody. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.